As usual, we start with the vocabulary. Our first word today is ant eater. This is actually two words, as you can see. Ant, right? Little, uh, I think you say gamey in Korean, little, little ants running around. And then eater. So it's an interesting word. Something that eats ants. Okay, so ant eater is an animal that has a long nose and eats ants. And this is a good picture of an ant eater. It's a really strange looking animal, isn't it? But it's a very uh, unique and amazing animal, as all animals are actually. Okay, let's move on. Tongue. Tongue, of course, is the soft, movable part in your mouth. I would show you mine, but it seems a little rude to stick your tongue out at another person. So don't do that. We can see a picture of a frog. A frog has a very famous tongue and a very interesting tongue. We can see the tongue of the frog here. Well, look at how long that is. And the, the frog can flick, can flick its tongue out or throw its tongue out at an insect far away from the frog and catch it because the tongue is sticky. So the frog uses its tongue to catch its food, insects. Very interesting. Underground, underground. Of course, we live above ground. We don't usually say above ground because that's normal for us. But if we go under the ground, that's a little odd. So we say underground. And again, we have another word that has two words. Of course, we call these types of words compound words compound words because compound is when you take two or more things and you join them together to make one thing and we've joined two words under and ground to make one word and that means of course below the ground if you use the subway in your city you travel underground unless your subway comes up sometimes above ground but usually the subway sub means under way is path subway is another compound word but subway would be under the ground right usually under the ground and many animals of course live underground ants worms looks like a caterpillar or some kind of grub and then um looks like a mole uh, and other animals will live underground they make their homes in the ground underground okay spray to spray is to blow liquid into the air and of course mom uses something or dad of course uh, will use a cleaner you know and it sprays you you uh, have a little trigger here you push the trigger and it sprays the cleaning liquid onto the glass or the kitchen countertop or something like that be careful also because um, when you speak you also spray your spit from your mouth and that's why it's a good idea to wear a mask when people are worried about catching diseases right so spray is just uh, to blow liquid into the air whether it's normally through your mouth while you're talking or through a, a spray bottle when you're cleaning something but to spray okay adapt adapt means to change to change in order to be successful in a new situation so let's say you change schools your family moves from one city to another or even better your family moves from one country to another. Oh, that's a better example because when you move to the new country, maybe they're speaking a new language. They have different customs. They have uh, different ways to dress, different, maybe different clothes. You have to change uh, your behavior, your speech, and the way that you act probably to adapt to the new situation, the new environment in which you live. And animals, living creatures, do this all the time because the environment is always changing around us. So we adapt to our environment, adapt to change. And of course, we want to be successful. If we don't change, we won't be successful, right? Some people say change or die. Okay, that's, that's a natural law, right? Uh, so if uh, living creatures don't change, many of them will die. They have to change to be successful in their new environment. Next we have, oh, is a big word, 
little bit difficult, right? Wow, how do you pronounce that? Camouflage. Camouflage. Camouflage is an interesting word. It's an interesting idea, too. Take a look at this picture. It's an interesting lizard, right? Looks like an iguana. But um, some lizards and some frogs and other animals also will be able to change their color. And, you know, change their color. I don't mean like over a long period of time. I mean right away. Like uh, this type of lizard, frogs can do this. Octopus. If you ever see an octopus underwater, they're amazing. The color is, you know, uh, like pulsing on their skin as you watch them. And they're blending in. Camouflage is basically an animal's color or sometimes the shape of the animal also makes it hard to see it in nature. It's hard to see this lizard because it can change the color of its skin to the same color of the tree on which it sits. Frogs can do this too. Some frogs and like I said, octopus. If you ever look at an octopus moving over a coral reef, you know the coral reef has many different colors and the octopus changes so it matches the colors as it moves over the reef. It's really amazing. So that is camouflage. Sometimes people will wear camouflage, right? They'll wear a, a, a jacket or pants that have the, the black and the green uh, pattern on it. And th that's also what we call camouflage too, because if they go in the forest, it would be hard to see them because they're wearing black and green clothes, right? So that's camouflage. And we have a video showing camouflage. Look at this picture. I'll start the video. Can you see the creature? It's like playing Where's Waldo? Where's, the, oh wait, oh there it is. It's a butterfly. Of course when it opens its wings, right, we can see it easily because then it's not camouflaged. But when it closes its wings, it's a little difficult to see because it looks uh, like part of the tree bark. So that's a type of camouflage. Next word is skunk. A skunk is an animal that looks like this. It's usually black and uh, with white fur, black and white fur on it. And uh, you have to be careful around skunks. Joseph, uh, be careful. Uh, a skunk is a black and white animal that can make a bad smell. Actually, the skunk can spray. Uh, how can they make the bad smell? In their tail, they have these little um, ducks and they can shoot, they can spray this really bad smelling uh, liquid at people or animals, usually animals that try to catch them. Of course, a skunk isn't a very strong animal and you know, if a dog or a wolf or a coyote or even a bear tries to eat the skunk, the skunk just turns around, raises its tail and makes a, a shoots a spray at the animal and the animals, you know, most many animals uh, are very um, sensitive with their nose. They can smell a lot uh, better than we can. So their sense of smell is very strong. And when the skunk hits the, uh, the animal, especially the nose with that spray, the animal's like, whoa, I, no, I don't want to deal with this animal. This animal smells really bad. So then they run away and the skunk survives. So that's kind of an interesting uh, way that the skunk uses uh, to survive, to stay alive. Okay, that's our vocabulary for this lesson. Lesson 3 Animal Adaptations Anteater An animal that has a long nose and eats ants. Tongue The soft, movable part in your mouth. Underground Below the ground. Spray. To blow liquid into the air. Adapt. To change in order to be able to be successful in a new situation. Camouflage. An animal's color or shape that makes it hard to be seen. Skunk, a black and white animal that can make a bad smell.